Hi, this is Linda Green with a video on arc length from section 10.2. The arc length of a curve is just the distance you would travel if you walked along that curve. And I'm going to start with a simple example. Here my curve is just made out of straight line segments, so I don't need calculus to find the distance that we would travel walking along that curve. All we need to do is use the distance formula and calculate the distance between adjacent points. So the arc length here would just be the sum of the distances between consecutive points calculated using the distance formula. Distance of that segment is just 2. And finally, the distance of that last segment If we add these all up, we get 2 plus square root of 2 plus 2 square root of 5, which is about 7.9 units. It's possible to use this same idea to approximate the arc length of an arbitrary curve. Here, the, I would like to find the length of this blue curve and I'm going to imagine approximating it with these straight line segments drawn in pink by dividing up the curve into different points, P0, P1, P2, all the way through Pn. Pi here, the index i just means an arbitrary number between 1 and n. I'm going to start at time equals a and end at time equals b. I'm thinking of this curve as being a parametric curve parametrized by these equations, x equals f of t, y equals g of t. And so p1 is where I get to at time t1, and I get to pi at time ti. Since these equations give me the x and y coordinates of all these points, the coordinates of my point pi is just f of ti, g of ti, and the coordinates at my point pi minus 1 when time is ti minus 1 is just f of ti minus 1, g of ti minus 1. There's going to be a lot of notation in algebra as we work through a derivation of an arc length formula, but at the end we'll get a nice simple formula um, that comes out of a Riemann sum similar to problems we've done in the past. So bear with me. Okay, so to find the approximate length of this blue curve, the arc length, is approximately the sum from n equals 1, sorry, from i equals 1 to n of the distances between p, i, and p i minus 1. Right? That's just like what we did before. We just add up those distances. We're going to use the distance formula to do that. So we have the sum from i equals 1 to n of the square root of the differences between the x coordinate squared. So that's that difference, f t i minus f ti minus 1 squared plus the difference between the y coordinate squared, g ti minus g ti minus 1 squared. So that's looking a little bit like a Riemann sum, but generally when we have these Riemann sums, we need to have like a delta x, or maybe in this case a delta t out here, that'll turn into the dt of integration when we take the limit. So I'm going to do an algebraic trick here and just multiply the top and the bottom by delta t in order to get that delta t in there. I'm going to keep the top delta t here and suck the bottom delta t into the square root sign. When I suck it into the square root sign, I need to make it a square. So I have f of ti minus f of ti minus 1 squared plus g ti minus g ti minus 1 squared over delta t squared. 
rewrite this again. by breaking up the fractions. Oh, and I still have the delta t out here, right, that came from the top. Okay, so this expression here should remind you a lot of the slope of a secant line, right, or an average rate of change. As my delta t gets really small, this expression here, difference in f over the difference in t, is going to be approaching the derivative f prime. And in fact, by the mean value theorem, there is a number, t, we'll call it ti star, between ti minus 1 and ti, so that this ratio here, the slope of my secant line, is exactly achieved by the derivative at this ti star. Same thing with g. I suppose it could be a slightly different value of t that works. We'll just call it ti star star. But the idea is just that this quantity here is approaching the derivative as delta t gets small. Okay, so this is an expression for my approximate arc length. And my exact arc length is going to be the limit as n goes to infinity or as delta t goes to zero of this Riemann sum. And as usual, this limit becomes the integral from our starting point to our ending point of f prime of t squared plus g prime of t squared dt. So that's my arc length formula. And it's often written as dx dt squared plus dy dt squared dt. dx dt is just another way of writing f prime of t, and so on. So as promised, we have a pretty simple formula for arc length coming out of this somewhat nasty derivation. And it should make intuitive sense because this is measuring your change in the x direction, and dy dt is measuring your change in your y direction. So this square root quantity is just a little incremental piece of your curve. So let's do an example where we use that formula to calculate the arc length of this spiral curve given by these two equations. So we're going to be finding the length going from the point 1, 0 here to the point negative 1 pi up here. So this portion of arc length. OK, so we want to use our arc length formula, which is going to be the integral from whatever t value we start at to whatever t value we end at. These are the coordinates we start and end at. We need to figure out what the corresponding t values are of our formula for arc length. Now, since x is cosine t plus t sine t, we know that dx dt is going to be negative sine t. Using the product rule, we have plus sine t plus t cosine t, those cancel. And since y is sine t minus t cosine t, 
we know that dy dt is cosine t minus cosine t plus t sine t. Again, using the product rule for taking the derivative. Let's see, to get from to the point one, start, the starting point one zero is where t is zero. Plugging into the equations of x and y, you can see that when you plug in a time of zero, this drops out, this goes to one, and over here, everything drops out. And you can check that you get to the point negative one pi when t equals pi by again plugging in here. So I want to calculate the integral now from zero to pi of the square root of t cosine t squared plus t sine t squared dt, which simplifies to the square root of t squared cosine squared t plus sine squared t by multiplying out and factoring out the t squared. Since this part here is just one, we have the integral of the square root of t squared dt. And since t is positive here, the square root of t squared is just t. Integrating that, I get t squared over 2 between pi and 0, which gives me a final answer of pi squared over 2. We've done this derivation of arc length for functions that are written with parametric equations. But it's really easy now to also write down an expression for the arc length of a curve given in Cartesian coordinates. Because we can simply, if we have a function y equals f of x in Cartesian coordinates, we can parameterize that by just letting x equals t, and then y is just going to be f of t. And so our regular arc length formula gives the integral from wherever we're starting, t equals a to t equals b, of the square root of dx dt squared, which is dx dt is just going to be 1, and dy dt is just going to be f prime of t. So our arc length formula gives the square root of dx dt, oops, sorry, of 1 squared plus f prime of t squared dt. And a lot of times this is written, oh, I can do a change of variables here. Instead of using t as my variable, I can rewrite this just using my original x. Right, it's the same integral, just a different variable. A lot of times this is written instead as the integral from x equals a to x equals b of 1 plus dy dx squared dx. Let's use that expression to write down an integral to express the arc length of this parabola from x equals 1 to x equals 3. So since we have dy dx is 2x, we're just integrating from 1 to 3 of the square root of 1 plus 2x squared dx or the integral from 1 to 3 of the square root of 1 plus 4x squared dx. Fortunately, we were just asked to write down the integral, not to calculate it. But in fact, you do have the techniques to calculate this integral using a trig substitution, if you're so inclined. That's all for the video on arc length. There'll be another short video on surface area.